welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you my April mock draft. This is my final mock draft of the draft season. Here are some draft rules for this mock draft. The picks are based off logic and not psychic powers. They're also based off my own personal rankings of these prospects, and they're finally based off if I were the GM of the squad. I'm not trying to guess where players are going to go. I'm just basing these picks off if I were the GM and how I would draft for that respective team. The Indianapolis Colts are number one, and it's a foregone conclusion. They have to go with Andrew Luck, 6'4", 245 pounds. My only question is, can the Colts build around him with the rest of their draft selections? The Redskins own the second overall selection. Robert Griffin III lands in an ideal situation. The running game is there with Helu and Royster. The passing game is there. They add Garcon and Morgan along with those two tight ends. If Robert Griffin III can make gradual progressions as a rookie, the Redskins can find themselves in a playoff hunt later on in the season. Although Charles Johnson is not that big of a liability, he's better served that guard. That's why you have to add Matt Khalil. Helps solidify that offensive line, gives that running game more punch up front, and also helps protect Christian Ponder. I think the Browns have to have an impact player at number four, which is why I think Justin Blackman gives you a better value than Trent Richardson right here at number four. A guy that can get open, make plays, think Anquan Bolden his rookie season. That's not a bad thing. Plus, you team him up next to Greg Little. Now you have two viable one and two targets at the receiver spot, and you can get a breakaway threat at the running back position later on this draft. The Buccaneers continue to improve their secondary. They bring over Eric Wright from the Lions. Now they draft Morris Claiborne from LSU. You can move Rondé Barber to free safety. Larry Asante will man the strong safety position. And what used to be a weakness for the Bucs is now a huge strength for that defense. The Rams own the sixth selection. I have to go with Michael Floyd out of Notre Dame. Reason being, it helps the receivers slide down to more of a natural position. Amendola is better suited in the slot. You have Greg Salas that can control the middle of the field. I like Michael Floyd, his ability to get off the line of scrimmage and be a consistent number one threat for Sam Bradford and help open up that passing game and give running back Stephen Jackson more room to run the football. Next up are the Jacksonville Jaguars, and this selection is an Emory Hunt selection all the way. Elshon Jeffrey, 6'2", 216 pounds, but he plays like he's 6'5". You can't watch this guy play and think or even convince yourself that Stephen Hill out of Georgia Tech is better than this guy. This guy showed up in the big games at the big moments. He's a consistent threat, and you team him up with Lawrence Robinson and a newly signed Lee Evans. Now you're able to slide Mike Thomas down into the slot. This Jaguars passing offense, if Blaine Gabbert can overcome his scariness in the pocket, will be one to be reckoned with in this league. I have the Dolphins going with Melvin Ingram here. The top receivers are off the ball. Ingram is a guy that gets consistent pressure. He can play in a 3-4 or 4-3. So whichever defense they decide to go with, they have a tremendous playmaker coming off the edge. When playing in the NFC South, you have to have outstanding cornerback play. That's why Stephon Gilmore makes a lot of sense for the Panthers. Team him up with Chris Gamble, and they will be able to compete in the passing game with the Saints, the Falcons, and the Bucks. Now they signed Vincent Jackson, so Stephon Gilmore is a guy that brings a lot of ability to the Carolina Panthers. The Bills address a lot of needs in free agency on the defense side of the football. That's why Riley Reef makes a lot of sense here. A lot of people may think it's a reach. I think it's a great fit for the Buffalo Bills and what they want to do on offense. KC is next up on the clock, and I have them going on the interior of their offensive line with David DeCastro. You look at what the Chiefs bring to the table now on an offensive front. They will be able to plow open holes for the running game and protect Matt Castle back there in the passing game. I like Quentin Copels here for the Seattle Seahawks. This is a guy that can play defensive end, also D-tackle in pass rushing situations. Gives them a lot of versatility on an already aggressive defensive front. The Cardinals continue to bolster their offensive line. That's why I have them taking Cordy Glenn here. A lot of people think this is a reach for Glenn, but when you have Levi Brown as your offensive tackle, there's no offensive lineman that's too soon for you to select. Speaking of never taking a lineman too soon, the Cowboys take Peter Collins here out of Wisconsin. If they can keep Tony Romo upright, keep that running game on pace, the Cowboys can get back into the playoffs. I think adding a guy like Collins makes a lot of sense for that offensive line that needs a lot of help on the interior. Getting D'Amico Ryans from the Houston Texans was a huge addition for the Eagles. Luke Keekley makes a lot of sense here. He can play Sam. He can cover. 
He's going to help out that front seven, which was a huge weakness for the Eagles last season. Now is a big strength for this team. Look for them to compete defensively in the NFC East. The Jets are on the clock, and I have them going. Trent Richardson, you have to look at it this way. When they drafted Sean Green, they drafted him as a 25-year-old rookie. You look at a better version, a faster version of Sean Green and Trent Richardson. Watch how better Sanchez looks in the pocket when their running game is going. This guy's going to be a tremendous workhorse for the New York Jets. Next up are the United Bengals, and when you draft a young quarterback, you always have to draft weapons to help him succeed. Getting Kendall Wright and teaming him up next to A.J. Green makes a lot of sense here. Jermaine Gresham is going to hold down the middle at the tight end position. Jordan Shipley is going to hold down the middle as a slot receiver. Now that passing game is going to be explosive for Cincinnati next season. I have the Chargers going with Fletcher Cox here. I think they need help more on the defensive front than linebackers. They drafted a bunch of linebackers over the course of the seasons. This guy will help get pushed up front and allow those linebackers free reign to the quarterback. The Bears bring over Brandon Marshall so they don't have to go receiver. Mike Marsh retired so they don't have to go offensive line. Drake Kirkpatrick makes a lot of sense here defensively. He can play that cover two corner ideally. He's 6'2", 195 pounds. Team him up next to Charles Tillman. Slide Tim Jennings down to a slot corner. I think the Bears secondary will look a lot better this season as opposed to last. The Titans have added Cameron Wembley in the offseason, so this is a bit of a luxury pick. Whitney Merciless does a great job of getting to the quarterback. That's the one thing he does exceptionally well. You stick him down there in Tennessee in that rotation and watch how much he produces as a rookie. With their second first round selection, the Bengals address a defensive need in the secondary with cornerback Janoris Jenkins out of North Alabama via University of Florida. This guy has tremendous ball skills and also can help out in a return game. The Browns are back on the clock with their second first round selection. I have them going with Lamar Miller out of Miami, the quintessential West Coast running back. This guy has breakaway speed. He can catch the football out of the backfield. When you have a threat, in the backfield that can take it the distance on any given play, that makes your offense more dangerous. Colt McCoy will look a lot better this season as opposed to last due to the fact that they have now true game breakers at every position on offense. I think the Lions take advantage of an offensive line knee right here with Jonathan Martin out of Stanford, a guy that does a great job in the run game department. I think that's something that they need right now in Detroit helping to open up lanes for whoever's going to be back there in the backfield. Jonathan Martin is a great value pick right here for the Detroit Lions. The Steelers get defensive here by taking linebacker Donta Hightower out of Alabama, a guy that's going to be a force on the interior. And when you have a 3-4 defense, you have to continue to add linebackers. This is a great one coming out of that Nick Saban 3-4 defensive system down there in Tuscaloosa. Adding beef to the defensive front four, I think the Broncos go with Jarrell Worthy. I like this guy a lot. One of my favorite players in his draft. Disruptive force, always commands a double team. Does a great job of using his hands to get off blocks. I think when you get penetration from within on the defensive front, the linebacker is going to look a lot better. And the pass rushing opportunities you're going to free up for those defensive ends and those edge rushers will be tremendous. Look for Worthy to have an outstanding defensive rookie season. The Texans add another offensive weapon to their arsenal. Ruben Randall reminds me a lot of John Taylor. When you look at a guy that's the quintessential number two wide receiver, can get open, has sneaky breakaway speed. This guy was plagued by bad quarterback play at LSU. He should do fine down there in that Texans offense. The Patriots have two first-round selections. I think they go defense with this first one to Andre Branch out of Clemson. Tremendous burst off the edge, tremendous speed, closing speed to the quarterback, and that way they get younger and more athletic on that defensive front. Another 3-4 team adding defensive punch in the linebacking core. I think Courtney Upshaw fits the Packers' defense perfectly. This guy was a consistent nuisance for opposing offenses at Alabama. He should do the same at the next level for the Green Bay Packers. The Ravens are next up on the clock, and I think they go with safety. Mark Barron out of Alabama. They need someone that's young and aggressive to mold behind one Ed Reed and also Bernard Pollard, even though Barron is going to be a strong safety, so he's going to be behind Pollard. This guy fits perfectly for that Ravens defense. 
Next up are the San Francisco 49ers, and you look at Kevin Zeitler out of Wisconsin. You add punch up front. You add beef up front. Alex Smith is going to have more time in the pocket. He's going to be able to get the ball to those weapons downfield. They added Randy Moss. They've added Mario Manningham. You look for Crabtree to improve on the season. They bring over Brandon Jacobs. You have to add beef up front. I think Zeitler does a great job and played in a great program. They always produce great offensive linemen out of the University of Wisconsin. The Patriots are back on the clock, and I say they go back to the defensive side. Nick Perry out of USC add another aggressive pass rusher. This guy can play defensive end. He can also play outside linebacker if they go to a 3-4 look. Gives them a lot of versatility and gives them another guy to get to the quarterback and cause disruption for opposing offenses. Given the New York Giants, Kobe Fleener here makes a lot of sense to me because I think Martellus Ben is more of a blocker, and Kobe Fleener gives Eli Manning something that he's never had, a deep threat from the tight end position. Moving over to the second round, I think the Falcons take Mike Adams out of Ohio State, a guy that does a great job of run blocking, has great athleticism, and would do a great job of keeping Matt Ryan well protected. With the third round selection, I think the Saints go with safety Markel Martin out of Oklahoma State. The reason why he is scheme versatile, he can play free, he can play strong, and that allows you to take Roman Harper off the field on third down or slide him down to a weak side linebacker in passing situations. Rounding out the third round of giving the Oakland Raiders tight end Orson Charles out of Georgia. I think this guy does a great job of getting open. Physical presence at the tight end spot may be a little shorter, but he gives that Raiders offense more command over the middle of the field in the passing game, and the Raiders should look a lot better offensively in 2012. 